Hey guys, Dave Maxa here with HomeMusicStudio1.com. Thanks a lot for joining me watching this video today. I want to talk to you about how to record a song on your computer. And uh, just, to, just to point out a little bit of the obvious, I've, I've got a lot of posts. We've covered a lot of information on the blog. And uh, all of it is dealing predominantly with recording, not to an external interface, not to some type of hard drive or, or anything like that that's, that's uh, you know, a hard disk recorder of any type of thing, but recording directly to your computer. Now, if you're like me, maybe you've got a, a desktop or, or even a laptop. I've done a lot of recording directly on my laptop. But how do you get a song recorded on your computer? I want to give you five things that are very uh, just kind of key elements and really basic elements of this. One of the things that keeps coming up more recently is just questions about the basics. We've covered a lot of information, but but Dave, can you simplify maybe the, the beginning to the end process of recording a song on your computer? And so I want to do that, and I think the very easiest way for me to do that is to simply record a song onto my computer and show you exactly how I do that process and give you little bits and pieces that I think are, are maybe more uh, just really important to focus on. And so I'll document this process along the way, and I'll begin to share that with you uh, via the podcast, via some more posts, as well as some videos exactly like what I'm doing here. And so along the way, uh, throw, throw all your questions that you have as I'm doing what I'm doing. Please feel free to comment on uh, the blog and just give me some of your questions, and I'll address them as we're going along. Long. And so, again, five things that you need to, to know how to record a song on your computer. The number one is this, you need a space to record in. And uh, this may seem like a very obvious thing to you, but the reason I address this is because a lot of times there's a lot of concern, is my space big enough? What do I need in my space? You know, do I, do I really have uh, the right setup in order to record? Now, the room that I'm recording in right now, uh, I've shared on, a, on a, a, la a podcast episode a few episodes ago that I live in a rental home and I have moved my gear that was downstairs. I had a little more room. Uh, we had some issues with uh, some water leakages and some, some things. And so I've now moved my gear upstairs and I'm now sharing a space with my youngest daughter, uh, who is now seven months old. I've got a crib in here uh, that you can't see. It's off to the side of the camera. I've got a, a, a glider rocker in here for my wife as she's uh, dealing with the needs of, of my, my youngest, Kaylee's her name. And so I've got some space that I'm sharing. This room also has two windows in it. And uh, it's a rental, so I can't just knock out a soundproof vocal booth. There is a closet in here that I've got some uh, some ideas that I'm going to be using that space as well. But but you will be very uh, surprised at the quality of professional audio you can use and you can create in just about any space just by paying attention to a few key things. Now. You, you'll notice directly behind me, there's not studio foam on the walls. I've been in here for uh, about a month now, so I haven't really had time to do a whole lot. In addition to, I've got, I've got to be really creative with what I do in this space because it is a rental. You will notice that there is a blanket behind me if you haven't figured out what that is. I'm deadening the sound just a little bit right now initially with some blankets. I've actually got a blanket on the floor in front of me as well as uh, one of my son's uh, little uh, rugs that they have that they use for driving his little cars on, okay? So um, it, it's a Hot Wheels uh, rug right next to me. Okay, you can't see that as well. What am I doing? There's a wood floor in this space. And so I'm deadening the sound a little bit to help control the sound. These items really didn't cost me anything uh, as far as the, the direct effect that they're giving me for my studio. And so uh, at some point, we'll, we'll definitely address, uh, I've got a post where I talk about some very affordable ways to, to uh, treat your room acoustically. But Maybe right now you don't have a lot of options. And I, and I want to tell you that you do not need a gigantic space with lots of isolation booths where you can separate the drums from the guitars and so on and so forth. You just need a space to begin to work with. Now, every space is going to have its own issues that need to be addressed, but maybe you're like me, where in this particular season of your life, you maybe don't have a lot of options. Don't limit what you have by just thinking, oh, you know, my space is too small, I can't do anything. You'll be very surprised at the professional quality audio you can get in just about any space if you just address a few things. And so we'll talk about a little more of, of how I'm doing that in the, the space that I have in some coming videos. So number one, you need a space, okay? Maybe it seems pretty obvious, but process that. Don't... Um, 
Don't short sell what you have. And and I encourage people all the time, just start with where you're at, okay? Uh, a lot of times, rather than just assuming you need to work on some things, start with where you're at and then begin to listen to what's going on in the space that you have before you really make a whole lot of, of adjustments and you might be very pleasantly surprised. The second thing that uh, you need to have in order to record a song on your computer, uh, it might seem very simple, very elementary, but you need to have a source to record. You need to understand very specifically what it is that you are recording. And the reason I say that is in this case, we're talking about a song. And uh, I, w- I want to highly, highly encourage you, rather than just have something in your head and uh, kind of even maybe something that you can play and sing on an instrument, rather than just have those things kind of rolling around in your head, it's extremely important to process a little more of what that source is going to look like. What do I mean? Well, every one of the very first things that I do every time I record a song is I, I roadmap that song out on paper. And I've said this before in a podcast episode, but I can't stress this enough. It's extremely helpful just to think, okay, I've got an intro, I've got a, a verse one, I've got a pre-chorus and a chorus, and to, to roadmap those out, even if it's as simple as a, a, a chord chart, which would be lyrics with chords written above it, and just a roadmap that is V1 for verse and V2 for verse two or C for chorus or whatever helps you understand, know the roadmap and include in that roadmap uh, a tempo, just a a general tempo that that song is going to be recorded at. And maybe the key that that song is in is some things that will help you process exactly what this is going to look like from start to finish can be extremely helpful before you get that song even recorded at all onto your computer. So the third thing that is, uh, is something that you need in order to to know how to record a song on your computer is you need some type of, of capture device, and in this case, maybe a microphone. You need some way to capture what you're creating in just the natural space around you. You're playing and singing or you're singing to, to whatever it is. You need some way to capture that, and the most popular thing that we use is a microphone. Now, uh, I've got a couple of things in here because one of the, one of the biggest uh, assumptions that many times can get you into trouble is that you need a lot of microphones or you need a very expensive microphone. Technology has extremely lowered the cost of of quality mics for you and I today. So there's a lot of options out there. Uh, The microphone that I'm talking in right now is uh, is the most expensive mic that I currently own. It was about $180. It is a Shure SM137. It is a small diaphragm studio condenser. But let me me say between this mic and my good old-fashioned Shure 58, and then I also have uh, what what is technically considered a medium diaphragm, uh, to large diaphragm condenser, my MXL 990S. Now, these three microphones right here, uh, I do the majority of all my recording with. Now, if you only had access to an SM58 or a 57, uh, you could do almost everything initially that you need as well. There's a lot that you can do with one good solid microphone. Now, uh, you may have a few limitations that, that need to be overcome just by getting creative, but all these mics that I showed you, uh, at particularly the, the Shure 58 and the, the MXL 990S are under $100. In addition to the fact that there are a lot of microphones today that are under that $100 mark that are very affordable. And uh, I, I use this uh, studio condenser uh, that I'm talking to now for a lot of different things for uh, obviously the podcast and video uh, that, I, that I use as well. Um, sometimes I've used it for vocals, works great on instruments like recording my acoustic guitar. If I had one microphone such as this, I could do pretty much everything that I need to do with it as well. I could do the same thing with my Shure 58 as well as uh, with the MXL. And so um, start with getting one good quality microphone. You really don't need to spend much more than $100, especially if you're starting out, but you need something like a microphone in order to record. Uh, you can head on over to Home Music Studio one dot com slash toolbox. And there I've, I've, I talk a little bit more about some other microphone options and, and to just give you some some reasons behind that as well. And uh, you just search the blog. I've got some more information specifically about the MXL uh, line of microphones as well that may be helpful to you. And uh, so you've got a mic. The next thing that you need once you get your microphone is you need an audio interface. You need some way to plug that microphone into your computer and, uh, and to convert the information that is captured 
capturing the analog signal, the audio signal to convert that into digital information, ones and zeros to record that onto your computer. Again, we're talking about how to record a song on your computer, okay? And so um, what I have here is probably my favorite affordable audio interface. Uh, I've been working with this thing now for, for a little bit more than a month, had a lot of people recommend uh, some products. This is from uh, a company called Focusrite, and, and they make a lot of great lines. Uh, they make a lot of audio interfaces, and so this is by far not the only one, but this is the 2i2, the Scarlet 2i2. Uh, this thing was only about $150, but it records incredible quality audio for the money. It does full 24-bit uh, in 96K, which is which is uh, what I like to record at when I'm al originally laying down a track. Uh, has phantom power, which this particular microphone requires, and so you can uh, you can record without using a mixer, without doing anything else, but simply plugging, uh, say, a microphone like what I'm talking into directly into this recording interface. It has a USB out on it. That USB can go directly into your laptop, directly into your desktop, whatever you're using to record with. And uh, from there, you're, you're all set to go, uh, which brings me to the next thing you need is some type of recording software to then read what is uh, being captured and what is being converted from the audio interface. Uh, the digital signal that's coming into here, you need some type of recording software in order to uh, begin the process of recording and then mix and so on and so forth. Uh, in the recording world, we call this a digital audio workstation or DAW for short, uh, the recording software. And um, there are a lot, a lot of affordable options out there. Now, this particular recording interface came with, uh, I believe, Ableton Live, which was a light version of it. So many recording interfaces also come with uh, kind of some, some very simplistic versions of recording software, which can be absolutely part of the package. So you don't necessarily have to spend more money. Uh, there's some very affordable options out there. You can look at a program called Audacity, another program more in the multi-track range called Reaper. Uh, Reaper itself is is, uh, is uh, got a, a total, completely full-blown demo where it won't cost you a dime. And in order to, to buy the, the full functional version of the demo, which it is already, uh, is only right around $60. So very affordable there as well. Uh, on up to, um, you know, Cakewalk's got some programs, which I use, uh, Sonar X1. Uh, Sonar X2 just came out, which I used to record with. Uh, Pro Tools, uh, Logic for you Mac guys, also GarageBand. Uh, there's Fruity Loops. There's all sorts of uh, programs that that make great recording options. And let me just give you three guidelines for what recording software to use. Number one, can you afford it? Number two, does it do what you need to do? And number three, do you know how to use it? Or are you willing to learn how to use it? And, uh, you know, there's such a battle today. Pro Tools is, is, has kind of been the industry standard for years, but that is slowly gaining competition from a lot of other companies out there. And the, re the reality is, is I've got a post on this, so go ahead and check it out. Uh, if you can afford it, if it does what you need and you know how to use it, probably it's the best recording software for you. So I, I really don't care what you're using because there's so many options out there that you can get some great quality audio for. And so those five things, you need a space, you need a source, uh, in this case, a song to record, you need a mic, and you need an audio interface to capture what's coming from that microphone, and then you need recording software. Those five things are the basic elements of recording a song, of knowing how to record a song on your computer. And so in further episodes, I'm going to begin to walk you through this process of exactly how I record a song on my computer uh, and exactly what it looks like in these areas. And again, between now and then, just be looking for more podcast episodes, more videos, and I'd love to hear your feedback. Give me your questions so that we can make sure to address uh, all the questions that you have. And we're just going to make a very simple process of start to finish. I'm going to show you exactly what I do and, uh, and give you some highlights of, of exactly what that looks like. Looks like that you hear what I'm creating, and, uh, and, and that'll hopefully help you understand how to record a song to your computer. So with that, this is Dave Maxey with HomeMusicStudio1.com. Thanks for checking this video out, and uh, be looking for you in future episodes.